Only an elite group of chefs holds two Michelin stars. Michel Roux Jr. is one of them. So Master Toute Saint-Jacques will pass now. Now he and Master Chef Judge Greg Wallace are on the hunt for Britain's next culinary superstar. A professional with the talent to cut it in the world's top kitchens. Perfect. These six chefs have made it to today's quarter final. Now, the battle really begins. I'm in it to win it. There's no place for second best. It's about being first. No place to hide, and if you mess up, then you're going home. You have to keep focus and stay at the top of your game. The pressure is on, but hopefully I will prove Again, I've got the necessary skills and the love and passion for food, and that will see me through to the semi-finals. I did have niggling little doubts, but I'm starting to believe in myself a lot more now. Going home today is not an option, no. First, they must prove to Michelle and Greg they've got what it takes with a dish of their own invention. There is some serious talent in this quarter-final. I am genuinely very, very excited. Our chefs cannot afford to play it safe. Now's the time to really excel. Only the best chefs will go on to showcase their food for some of the UK's toughest restaurant critics. I like chocolate. I hate this. This is as near as it comes to a faultless dish. I don't like it. Six really good chefs in front of me, and we only have four places in the next round. One exceptional plate of food, and you are through. You have got a beautiful array of ingredients to choose from. Poussin, racks of lamb, bream, clams, strawberries, wild mushrooms. It's a perfect market stall for you to be inspired. We're going to give you 10 minutes to come up and choose your ingredients. Choose wisely. Come on, up you come. I'm going to show a bit of creativity today. Hopefully they like it. I think the selection's fantastic. I'm thinking lamb, I'm thinking aniseed, I'm thinking red wine. It's like not knowing where to go or where to look. Five minutes, guys, another five minutes to shop. It's a nice bit of fish here. I'm just trying to work out a garnish now for it. I've got a few things going in my head. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. A minute and then back to your bench. I've changed my mind on what I'm doing. I'm going for a dessert instead. I know last minute, but got to take a risk of you at this point. Right, guys, shopping time is over. Cooking time begins. You've got one hour. Good luck. David, 21-year-old junior sous chef, likes to think out of the box. Well, today's test should be perfect for him. I am the most creative here today because I use a lot of ingredients that people are scared to use. I'm going to think to myself what everyone else would do. I'm going to do the complete opposite. David, I haven't seen you cook savoury food yet. Are you going to wow me? I'm going to do um, a bit of poussin wrapped in bacon with a tomato and chervil risotto. I'm still debating between a mustard sauce or a vanilla sauce, so... Wow! Uh, why? I just want to prove to you that I can do savoury food as well as desserts. 
David has turned his back on desserts, but he's still staying kind of wacky. I'm not sure about a tomato risotto with pine nuts and poussin wrapped in bacon on top. John is a 30-year-old head chef. He's now working in Bolton. I've rarely seen so much passion for food in a man. He cooks gutsy food full of flavours. Well, today we're looking for refinement. I love being creative as a chef. It's, there's no boundaries to what you can do. Whether it works or not is irrelevant. It's the fact that you've got the balls to go, go ahead and do it. I'm making you a white chocolate pie with macerated berries and tarragon custard. Whoa! What's a chocolate pie? It's pastry with a white chocolate sponge uh, in the middle with some raspberries folded through it. A pie conjures up visions of big and heavy. Uh, how are you going to make this elegant and stand out? If I get it right, hopefully you can see my personality shining through in the food. If not, you're going to think, what the hell is this guy about? I've never had a chocolate pie. I'm ready to fall in love with it. I like the combination. I just hope he can make it refined enough. Kim, 30-year-old sous chef in London. Good, solid chef. The kind of chef that I would want in my brigade. Well, now is the time for her to be creative and imaginative. I think what I have to do today is just be very true to who I am as a chef. Flavour is the key, and I want to make sure that what I do plate is amazing. What are you doing, Kim? A saffron marinated pan fried bream on a asparagus and fennel salad, and I'm going to finish that with razor clams and vanilla beblanc. Vanilla and saffron together? Something you've done before? No. No. I feel I need to come out of my comfort zone. You know, experimenting is all about being a great chef, and I think I'm not too afraid of that at all. I want to do that for you and produce a fantastic dish. I wanted Kim to be a little bit more adventurous, and I think we have it now. The bream with the saffron, I understand that. And she's serving it with a vanilla sauce. Is this fish meat pudding? <laughs> You're halfway. 30 minutes left. Matt, 26 year old corporate chef with a French heritage. He's proved he's good on seasoning and technique. The food I've eaten from that young man has been very, very tasty. Today I'm just going to give everything I have, and it's the most important plate of food I'm going to do in my life, so it's got to be perfect. Matt, what are you making for us? Lentils with bacon, with uh, poussin, celeriac puree, pickled giroles. In mm. many respects, this is tried and tested French classic cuisine. Yes. Is that enough? It's what I know, so I'm not going to do anything stupid and do ingredients I don't know work together. If you do it properly, present it properly, then there's nothing wrong with that. Matt, what does this really mean to you? I'm getting married in September, and all those plans have gone out the window, and I'm just concentrating on this, so that's how much this means to me. Wow. <laughs> I don't think my wife would have put up with that. <laughs> Matt is sticking with the regional classic French food that he knows and loves. We know he does that style of cooking well. I just would like to see him cook with a bit more adventure. Chris, sous chef from Wales, has classic technique and very smart modern presentation. Immaculate, and he has got that competitive spirit in him. Today is the day he really has to prove himself. I keep me cool under pressure, and I concentrate on my food, my station, nothing else. I've been very well trained, and I'm a very good chef. What are you cooking for us, Chris? We're in pan said bream with slurry up puree, built of spinach and a dill emulsion. Classic. No Chris twist. Not to wait and see. 
He's a tease, isn't he, eh? Mm. Is this dish your style? The food I like to cook and the food I like to eat. The fine dining is where my passion really lies. Just the thrill of seeing that something that looks amazing on a plate. And people enjoy that one dish and they come back the next week and have the same dish again. Chris's dish sounds classic. Buttered vegetable, bream and emulsion sauce. Tried and tested ingredients. Is it going to be exceptional? Sean, 40-year-old head chef from the British Army. Beautiful, precise cooking so far. This test will prove whether he really has championship credentials. I take each challenge very much like a military approach. Evaluate the situation, look what I've got, and then execute. Take the ball by the horns and away we go. Sean, what is your dish to impress today? Poached sea bream, sat in a bed of spinach chanterelles uh, with a wild mushroom top hat ravioli. We know you can do beautifully presented food. Everything here on the plate for a reason? Today is about producing a good, clean plate of food with good flavours on it and it's appealing to the eye. Sean seems really confident now, but ravioli on top of fish is not a usual combination. I hope that's not pride before a fall. I've seen Sean roll out his ravioli. It looks really thick and heavy. We want finesse. Last ten minutes. Move it. Almost silence in the kitchen. The focus and the concentration on our chef's faces is just supreme. Two minutes. Last two minutes. Come on. Stop! Stop! Army chef Sean has chosen to cook the sea bream poached and served on a bed of wilted spinach topped with wild mushroom ravioli, butter sauce, spinach and basil oil, and a chilli drizzle. Visually, Sean, it's a little bit too yellow for me. Sitting the ravioli on top of the fish really hides it. I know you said it was like a hat, but this is like a sombrero. The ravioli itself is cooked through, but it's a little bit thick. The sauce is a little bit heavy as well. The sea bream is beautifully cooked. However, poaching or steaming fish like that means that the skin isn't really nice to eat. My eye is drawn to the lime green and the amber that you have running around that sauce. I think that's lovely. Thank you. The fish is really soft and just falling away. It's lovely. And there's little sharp notes inside the sauce. However, I'd much prefer to eat that without the ravioli. OK. OK. A little bit disappointed with my dish. I don't know if I've done enough to go through. Junior sous chef David chose to cook the poussin, wrapped in bacon and served on tomato and Sherville risotto, with baby carrots, asparagus and pine nuts. He failed to serve his marinated egg yolk because it broke. First off, don't bill a risotto to the customer and give him little canals of rice. A good risotto should be runny, not quenellable. It looks odd. It doesn't look right. Your little poutine balutine with the crispy bacon around the outside is lovely, delicious, heavenly, really, really good. But your risotto is undercooked, dry, under-seasoned. I think if you'd have managed to get that egg yolk on the plate, it really would have helped this dish a lot. I am disappointed with this thing. I am, I am. I think you've got the presentation wrong. However, I think it tastes very good indeed. 
There's creaminess in there. There's a slight bit of acidity. Got a couple of issues with textures. You've still got the rind on the bacon, which is a little bit chewy, and the rice is still too firm. I wish I did it a different way. I guess it, the, I had the picture in my head of what I was going to do to begin with. Then it fell apart. Welshman Chris has chosen the bream. He served it pan fried with a celeriac puree, a bream fritter, and a creamy dill sauce. I love it. I think it's really smart, very sexy. Yummy. Dill and fish, tried and tested combination. You've put it together beautifully. It's just lovely, mate, honestly. Mm -mm -mm. Sea bream is beautifully seasoned and, and well cooked. Skin could be just a touch crispier. Your dill emulsion, a little bit heavy, but it packs a real punch of dill and aniseed, which works beautifully well with the fish. The vegetables, attention to detail there, immense attention. This is good cooking. Very good cooking. It's an incredible feeling to get some of that high calibre praising your food. And <laughs> I'm in heaven. Kim from Cheshire is the third chef to choose the bream. Infused with saffron, pan fried, and served with an asparagus and fennel salad and a vanilla and razor clam beurre blanc. First off presentation, I think it looks beautiful. I love the colours. I love the precision in the dressing. It's smart, elegant, light, and very appetising. Thank you. The bream, well cooked, nice crisp skin. Works beautifully well with the crunchy salad there. Great balance of flavours. The celeriac puree, I think it's just one step too far. You didn't need it. OK. Razor clams, although nicely cooked, with vanilla and tarragon, is so unusual, it's just a bit weird. OK. However, that beautifully cooked fish on top of a salad with a sharp vinaigrette is wonderful, especially when the saffron comes in as an after note. I mean, that is beautiful. My dish I was very happy with. I created something which was out of my comfort zone and hope they see the potential I have. John from Cardiff is the only chef to make a dessert. A white chocolate sponge encased in pastry, served on macerated strawberries with a tarragon custard. Presentation, I think it's really nice. I think it's precise. Be generous. Be... Whoa, look at that. The pie itself and the sponge is just too heavy. It, it's, it's a massive, great, big pudding there that, that I defy anybody to munch through. But what I really like is the custard with vanilla and tarragon. Never come across it before, and I think it's delicious. Give me a bowl of those strawberries and a bowl full of that creme anglaise, and I'd be happy. Your tastes are heavenly, but the textures are too thick and, and heavy. I've just been kissed by an angel wearing obnail boots. Maybe putting a sponge in pastry wasn't the best idea, but I took a risk. Whether that was good or bad judgment, I don't know yet. Corporate chef Matt has stayed true to his French roots and chosen the poussin, poached then pan fried and served with bacon and lentils, celeriac puree, pickled girole, and a red wine jus. Lovely cooked poussin, crispy skin, moist, and well seasoned. I love these little pickled girolles. They add a, a, a real zing to the dish and, and an extra dimension. It's very good classical French regional cooking. The lentils, 
bags of flavour with the bacon and wine, but a little bit underdone for me, a little bit chalky. Buttery soft chicken, absolutely lovely. And a triumph of a celeriac puree. Creamy, bursting full of flavour. Texture, however, is something else. It is slightly dry. I think you'd probably ask the waiter for an extra bottle of water by the time you'd finished it. A bit disappointed, to be honest. If I go through to the next round, I would definitely step it up to, to the next level. Great cooking today. Four of you go through the next round, two of you have to leave the competition. Thank you very much. What a great start to the quarter-final. I mean, cooking far exceeded my expectations. You could see the concentration, the passion that was going on in this kitchen. I mean, it, it was beautiful to watch and to taste. My favourite dish in here today was Chris's. I thought the whole thing was absolutely delicious. I didn't have one word of criticism. I loved it. Chris has got all the attributes to wow the critics. He should definitely go through I think I've, I've done enough in my eyes to get through. Just keep fingers crossed and, and pray. I thought Kim's sea bream today was absolutely beautiful. That fish, with the saffron coming through the slits in the skin, was like a tropical sunset, and it tasted wonderful. Today I fell in love with Kim's food. I have a sneaky feeling she's got a lot more to give. I was cooking at my best. I hope it's enough to get me through to the next level. Sean was upset with himself today because he hasn't reached the standards that he sets himself and that we know he can achieve. I liked Sean's fish with the spinach and the sauce and the different coloured drizzles, but I didn't like Sean's ravioli one bit. But the fish was absolutely cooked to perfection and I definitely think Sean should go through to the next round. To go home at this stage, I'd be gutted. It means the world to me to stay in this competition to go on to you know, become a champion. Now? It gets a bit trickier. David cooked Poussin Ballotin wrapped in bacon. It was well cooked and tender and moist, but his risotto was dry. It wasn't a risotto, it was undercooked and under seasoned. In a room full of quality cooking, his dish came up a little short. I think David's lack of experience has shown here today. I'll be devastated to go home now. Coming as far as I have, and then just to get thrown out of the competition, just be heartbreaking, I guess. I'm sorry to see David go, but we can't keep him on. Now we've got to decide between John and Matt. There is a level of fun and inventiveness in John that I don't believe I'm ever going to see in Matt in 10 years of cooking. John gave us a sponge pie, something that I'd never seen before, and to be quite honest, that I never want to see again. Matt gave us a roasted poussin with puy lentils that I've seen before and I will never tire of. That, for me, is the difference between the two. Yeah, I can't say you're wrong. I know you're right, sponge pie, silly. But the man who gave me sponge pie also gave me strawberry, vanilla and tarragon, which was probably the best tasting thing in the whole room. It's hard to ignore. I know who should stay and who should go. Yeah, I know you know, but we don't agree. <laughs> Do we go safe? Do we go inventive? It's never easy to make that decision to send two home, especially at this level, because the cooking was up there with the best. But we have made our decision. And the first chef leaving us is... David. Thank you very much for the opportunity.
I should have performed a lot better than that. I'm just a bit upset that I never got to show them what I was really about. And the second chef leaving us is... John. I'm a bit gutted that I'm out, but there's a lot that I've learned, Jeremy. I've learned that I can cook, I can clearly cook because I'm here, just not as well as everybody else. You now are going to be cooking for three well respected restaurant critics. We've only got two places in the semi-final. An hour and 15 minutes to produce the best two courses of your career. Let's go. Our chefs today have to be seriously focused because there is nothing going to get past those critics. They are going to have to cook out of their skins. Food that is elegant, but above all, tasty. Impress the critics and they're through to the semi-final. Sean is an army chef and you can see his timing's never late, his presentation is bang on, he's just got to keep this momentum going. That is one class operator. The level of competition, it is high. It's all about the execution on the day. You know, the pressure's on, but then again, you know, I'm an old boy. Um, hopefully teach some of these uh, young chefs a, a few tricks or two. Right, Sean, how are you going to impress the critics now? I'm doing a espresso loin of fallow deer, served with a potato fondant, a celeric puree, broad beans and raisins. And for pudding, I'm doing a chocolate and raspberry souffle mm. with hot raspberry jelly and a chilled ice cream with a raspberry crisp. You have got your work cut out. Yes, Chef. Tried and tested? Have you done this before? I've done this before, yes, Chef. And within time? And within time, yes. God, no wonder you've got a bit of sweat on your brow, though. Yeah. And I don't suppose you ever cook for restaurant critics, have you, Sean? Uh, I've never cooked for restaurant critics. My only critics have been the soldiers, you know. <laughs> so uh, I, I'll probably say they might be harsher. <laughs> I'm sure they are harsher. <laughs> Sean has got so many processes going on. He's cooking in a vacuum bag at low temperature, then roasting, making purees, then he's making a souffle, but he's making a warm jelly and ice cream. <laughs> Kim is now expressing herself as a true chef. With delicate flavours and precise cooking, I can't wait to see how far she can go. Kim, what are you making for us? Pan-fried sea trout, English peas, and I'm going to do a black olive and anchovy dressing. Second course, I'm going to do a hazelnut and tonka bean cheesecake sandwich with balsamic roasted strawberries. What's a cheesecake sandwich? That's what you'll have to wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> Some pretty talented chefs in the kitchen here today. What's going to set you apart? Desserts is not my biggest thing, and uh, I'm trying to push the boat out today and create something that you will think is uh, wow and fantastic. Tonka bean cheesecake sandwich. I just hope that tastes every bit as yummy as it sounds. If anybody can pull it off, I think Kim could. 15 minutes have gone. You've had quarter of an hour already. I haven't seen any weaknesses in Chris. I get excited every time that young fella cooks. Brilliant presentation, great flavours, always a little trick up his sleeve. I just hope he isn't over-ambitious and doesn't try too hard. I'm pushing myself to the limit today because if I don't, then I'm going home and I do not want to go home. I want to go all the way to the final and hopefully win MasterChef 2011.
Chris, what are you cooking? We're doing cannon of lamb with broccoli puree, party potato and an offal fritter. Mm. And for dessert, I'm doing vanilla panna cotta with a rhubarb and grenadine soup, twill biscuit and chantilly cream. What is it in these dishes that are going to propel you through to the next round? Uh, just showing that I've got more technical ability than the rest of the chefs here. I'm not going to stop until I get to the top. As you advance through the competition and we like your food, you have grown about a foot taller. It's just getting great comments. I feel more confident in my abilities. I feel it's getting better. I'm learning. So I just feel I'm growing as a chef. Any more stars on your neck if you get through this round? Uh, might be on the other side. We can find some room. Chris's menu sounds extremely ambitious. So much, so much to do. He's up for it, big time. Chris today is on fire. <laughs> I love Matt's style of French classic cuisine. Of course I do. But what I want to see from Matt is a bit of flair. I'm nervous. My own two courses, I've got nothing to hide behind. So it's got to be perfect cooking for an hour and a quarter. Right, Matt, what are you cooking? Pigeon ballotine cooked in a water bath with cabbage, bacon, black pudding, cauliflower puree and a little confit shallot. Dessert and chocolate fondant, pistachio ice cream, and a bit of chocolate sugar work. So you are going to be showing off a modern technique of cooking in a water bath? Yes, that's what I was trying to show. As well as classical cooking, I can also do the modern techniques. You really want to impress us today, don't you? Yes. I've got one hour to cook. Best plate of food I've ever done in my life, so... Yeah, it means everything. Chocolate fondant, really risky. Ice cream, really risky. He's doing both together. If I cut into that chocolate fondant and it oozes hot chocolate all over a pistachio ice cream, I'm going to give him a kiss. Guys, you've had half an hour. 30 minutes have gone. These three food critics have tasted hundreds of dishes on MasterChef. They've seen it all and can spot talent a mile away. We're looking for rock-solid technique and we're looking for some flair, a bit of imagination, something exceptionally good. We're looking for great. What I live in fear of is people thinking that the way forward is to really risk everything. Take a few risks, but please don't take risks with my appetite. It's very hard to put your finger on what the perfect dish might be, but the only thing I can say is that I will recognise it when I see it. These critics are the top of their industry. They are respected throughout the trade. They can make or break a chef. The pressure is immense. You can't hide. Not today. Fifteen minutes and these mains have to go. Yeah, happy that. So, Sean, espresso loin of fallow deer served with a fondant potato, celeriac puree, baby beetroot, broad beans, raisins, and a Pedro Jimenez Julie. Goodness gracious me. Sean is either an exceptionally confident, brilliant cook or a completely misguided fool. 90 seconds left. Just bring it all together. You all right with that, Sean? Nice and red. I like it like that. Good. Come on then, Sean, let's go. That's it. Lovely, lovely. Looking good. Personally, I love it. Can it go? Go and get them, mate. Go and do it, Sean. Yep, door's open over there. Go for it. Sean has cooked espresso loin of fallow deer, served with a fondant potato, celeriac puree, baby beetroot, broad beans, raisins, and a Pedro Jimenez julie. Yes, it's very attractively presented, isn't it? It's a lot neater than uh, his description. Well, the good news is you can really taste the espresso 
on the venison. The bad news is I'm not entirely sure that I like it. It's just a little bit too bitter. I don't like it. The venison is tough. I find the bitterness a complete distraction. And the fondant potatoes are underdone. It looks like I'm going to be the lone voice crying in the wilderness in defence of Sean's venison. Taken by itself, I can see that it would be too bitter. But I think with all the other sweet things going on here, it gives it a bit of complexity. So shoot me. It tastes beautifully unusual. Bitter coffee, real sweetness of sherry, and deeper sweetness of the raisins. The coffee around the deer is delicious, but I don't like the sauce. It's got an overriding taste of stock cube. It looks great. It doesn't quite deliver for me. Right, bad news is you've got 15 minutes for dessert. I like the confidence and ambition of Sean's menu. Chocolate and raspberry souffle on its own would be a marvellous thing, but he's embellishing with a hot raspberry jelly, chilled ice cream and a raspberry crisp. What's up, Sean? Not happy, Chef. Not happy? Not happy no. with that? It's not going right for me. I'm disappointed. Sean's having issues with his souffles. If they don't rise, that's a disaster. Your jelly's all right, though. Yeah, my jelly's fine, Chef, yeah. Ice cream? The ice cream is just cream. That's not looking good, either. What are we going to do? I'll just do a bit of a chill cream. Sean, you're already five minutes over. I just want it to be just right before I send it out, Chef. I find I'd rather go and tell the critics for just another minute. Yeah, yeah. go and tell them. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, my souffle still needs a little bit longer. Uh, I'd just like to apologise for the, the delay. Um, I'd like to serve it correct. OK, Sean, done. Quick. Please don't watch out the plates are hot. OK. For dessert, Sean has made a chocolate and raspberry souffle with hot raspberry jellies and a raspberry crisp topped with whipped cream. It's a bit of a trap, really, isn't it? If you have a hot jelly, you have to have a hot plate. If you have a hot plate, you can't have cold cream without it going all gooey all around the place. I like chocolate. I like souffles. I hate this. God knows what it's meant to be, but it's dark and bitter and hostile. It's like all the air has been sucked out of it and it's a dense little puck. The hot jelly, which looks disconcertingly like a wine gum, tastes like solidified puree. It has a very strange grainy texture to it. It's the black hole of desserts. <laughs> it's a dessert that's collapsed in on itself and it is sucking light out of the room. Warm jelly, warm jelly. Yeah, that's lovely. I'm just not sure the warm jelly's enough to save the rest of the plate. Technically, this is a disaster. Once you serve that first course and you know they're sat there waiting for you, the pressure really hits you. I just feel like I've totally let myself down. Today was, uh, it was tough, very tough. Kim, 15 minutes before your main goes out, you know don't you? Yes? Yes, yes. But I look at Kim's menu and feel reassured by its basic simplicity. Sea trout with asparagus and English peas and a black olive and anchovy dressing all makes a clear and clean kind of sense. Kim, what's left to go? Just plating right now. Uh, that's looking good. I uh, love the look of this, Kim. Ready. Can we go? Ready. Let's do it. Kim has made pan-fried sea trout with asparagus, English peas, and a black olive and anchovy dressing. I love the look of this. 
I think she's got amazing movement that she's managed to create through the plate. I think it looks fantastic. It looks very pretty, doesn't it? Pink and green. Please, please be good. Well, this is as near as it comes to a faultless dish. The fish is brilliantly cooked. And then she's let the other ingredients speak for themselves. The tapenade thing goes very well. It's got a little spicy kick to it. And the green sauce is very, very nice. Good taste, good ingredients, great execution. Makes me very happy. Unreservedly good. That's seriously good cooking. The fish, lovely crispy skin. Asparagus puree, bags of flavour. I think it looks beautiful and it tastes even better. Listen, 15 minutes, cheesecake sandwich. Yes. Hazelnut and tonka bean cheesecake sandwich. Cheesecake, never get one of those out of bed. And balsamic vinegar with strawberries can work very well. So there's a lot of promise there. Sixty seconds, but we're doing all right. Sixty seconds. Way! This we like. Very nice, lovely colours. Happy? Very happy, yes. Good. Yes. Three? Yes. For dessert, Kim has made a cheesecake sandwich. Layers of tonka bean cheesecake filling between two hazelnut twill served with balsamic roasted strawberries and basil. Kim's got a real eye, hasn't she? It just looks kind of sexy. Things are sort of bulging out all over. I want to get in there. This is terrific. There's a sort of saltiness to the, to the cream filling. And the biscuit on top is terrific. It's so tasteful. It makes you want to weep. I've eaten many a tonka bean over the last few years, but this is the first time that I've eaten one that actually tastes fantastic. The cheesecake mixture is really silky smooth and delicious. I love the strawberries and balsamic vinegar. And there's a hint of pepper in there as well, which gives a little bite. A lot of technique here. I think the presentation is beautiful. That is absolutely delightful. I think the whole thing is yummy. My dish I was very happy with. I created something which was out of my comfort zone and hope they see the potential I have. How are you doing, Chris? Good, good. All set for the main course. It's just got warm garnish, pan layer, fritter and plater. You've got 12 minutes. So Chris's menu, cannon of lamb with broccoli puree, Savoy cabbage casserole, parsley potato, offal fritter, and a tomato jus. I'd like to see the word offal used more often. Putting the prime cuts with the cheaper ones seems to me a fine idea. You happy with everything here, Chris? Very happy. Come on, son, this is beautiful. Well done, Chris, well on time. Very nice, very smart, well done. Yeah. Chris has cooked a cannon of Welsh lamb with broccoli puree, Savoy cabbage casserole, parsley potato, an offal fritter, and a tomato jus. It's nice to see gravy turning up in enough quantity to dip things into. And the lamb looks admirably pink. The main issue for me is that this is a lamb dish in which the lamb is not particularly spectacular. It's over trimmed the fat, not allows it to be that rich, salty, caramelised, crispy thing that we all love on lamb. I like the little fritter with its awful filling. It sort of tastes rather like it looks, which is perfectly decent, but it's just not blowing my socks off. Mmm. There's sweetness and there's good seasoning, there's iron from the cabbage and there's rosemary in that sauce as well. That is lovely. The lamb, for me, is ever so slightly overcooked. It almost looks as if it's been boiled. 
but I really like that offal fritter. I think it's delicious. A really nice touch. Broccoli puree and the cabbage are delicious. I really do like this dish, but there are errors. Right, Chris, 15 minutes, dessert, yeah? yeah? Go, 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 do it. Vanilla panna cotta with a chilled rhubarb and grenadine soup, creme chantilly and a tweel biscuit. Hiding behind these grand words is the basic stuff you learn in dessert school in week one. Getting a panna cotta right is not quite as easy as it looks. Chris, that's beautiful panna cotta. Look at that vanilla. So what have we got here? Rhubarb and grenadine soup. Oh, mate. Poached rhubarb underneath? Yeah, chef. We're going to go? Yeah. Come on. Come on. Well done. For his dessert, Chris has served a vanilla panna cotta with a chilled rhubarb and grenadine soup, creme chantilly, and a twill biscuit. This panna cotta is wobbling as it should. It is moving in the correct manner. It's a shame he served it in a washing up bowl, but apart from that, it looks great. On the plus side, and it's a big plus, he has executed this dish very, very well. But is it what somebody in this sort of competition should be doing to make their mark? It feels like there should be a pastry element, just one other thing. It's slightly meagre. It's like doing the easy dive rather than three pikes and a tuck and whatever other things divers do. <laughs> it is cool and refreshing and fruity and slightly sharp and then vanilla cream panna cotta at the end. That is nectar. I would have liked a little bit more rhubarb and a few more twill biscuits, but it's a very good dessert. Really well, really happy with my food. The uh, main course I thought was perfect. Panna cotta was perfect. Soup was bright red and full of flavour. And I couldn't have done any better if I tried. Matt, you've got 15 minutes to go. You all right? Yeah, I uh, should be on time, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. OK, good. So, Matt. Five spice crusted pigeon ballantine with cauliflower puree, confit shallot, black pudding, and savoy cabbage. Pigeon ballantine suggests that he's actually going for it. You can do something exciting with it. That could really be a standout dish. You've got two minutes, Matt. Yeah. Let's make sure it's exactly how you want it to be. Yes. So, what's left uh, now, Matt? I'm just going to plate up and carve the pigeon. You've got a minute. Good, 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 good. Carrot for colour. Your sauce all right? Yeah, it's, it's going to have to do. What were you looking for? Nice dark veal stock colour, not red like this. Well done. Matt has cooked five spice crusted pigeon ballotine with cauliflower puree, black pudding, confit shallot, and savoy cabbage. Moderately pretty plateful, but also where's the gravy? I like a bit of gravy. Pigeon is very, very difficult to get right. Undercook it and it looks a bit red and liverish. This looks a bit red and liverish. <laughs> I very much like cauliflower puree. Mm. It's big and rich, but there's something about the texture of the pigeon which just isn't right. The pigeon should be the star of this performance, and it's not. It's the third spear carrier in the background somewhere. I actually like the pigeon. Oh, right. I think he's coaxed a good amount of flavour from it. Black pudding's fine, the puree gorgeous. It's a shame there's lots of almost nice things, but it doesn't just quite come together. 
cauliflower puree is really nutty and silky smooth. It's delicious. I think it really works well with that pigeon. The flavour that you get from that five spice and breadcrumb with the texture, very good. I'd have my pigeon a bit more cooked, but he's proved he can do style and elegance. Matt, 15 minutes and then dessert, yeah? yeah. Chocolate fondant with pistachio ice cream, hazelnuts, chocolate twill and gratine cherries. Oh, if I never eat another chocolate fondant in my life, I won't really mind. Get it right, we applaud, get it wrong and we laugh our heads off. Fondants take seven minutes to cook. Yes. And there's eight minutes to go, so you're bang on time, yeah? Yes. You've got a motor a bit now. Come on, three minutes to go. You've got 60 seconds. So I'd rather be a minute later than I'm collapsing. We can give you a minute. Chocolate bit, bouncy, crispy wafer thing. Magic. Careful, don't drop. Go easy, well done. Is it going to have a runny centre or is it going to have uncooked cake mix in the middle? <laughs> For pudding, Matt has made chocolate fondant on a bed of crushed hazelnuts, honey and griotine cherries served with pistachio ice cream and a chocolate twill. Having said that I never wanted to eat another chocolate fondant in my life, Matt's found a way of making it look exciting. And the new wave twill on the top. It looks very nice. I like the way it's bowing. And absolutely perfect. That's not an easy thing to do. The texture's beautiful, I love the ice cream. And the way the nuts play into it, a lot more character than a normal dessert, hasn't it? Everything made beautifully. Texture's wonderful. For me, I'd like it a little bit sweeter. I think it's sweet enough. Do you? Hmm. I really like that pistachio ice cream because it's got a wonderful deep flavour of pistachio. I've pushed myself to, yeah, to the max. Uh, gave it everything I've got. I was expecting great things today, and they delivered. It was great to watch and great to taste. I'm awed by the, the level of achievement, but I can't believe that Sean tripped up the way he did. I feel really sorry for Sean because he had so much potential, so much promise. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. I really didn't like the sauce that he served with his coffee-coated deer. I found it too harsh and too sweet. Fondant potatoes needed to be softer and the broad beans weren't cooked enough either. That was the start of it. But dessert was a write-off. The chocolate souffles, they didn't rise. They looked more like brownies than souffles. We had ice cream that turned into chilled cream that wasn't chilled and turned into cream. He had a disaster. This is harsh, it's tough, but there's no way Sean can go through. I'm feeling quite deflated at the moment. I'm disappointed with myself. If I leave today, then I leave, and, you know, I've only got myself to blame. What a day Kim had. No tricks, no bells and whistles, just quality, technique, traditional, skillful cooking. The crispy skinned sea trout was cooked to perfection, along with that lovely garnish of mixed green vegetables. It was cooking at its best. I also really liked her cheesecake sandwich. It was absolutely delicious. Kim's a semi-finalist by the sounds of it. She definitely has got to go through. I'm very happy with both courses. I think I've really uh, done myself proud today. That means we've got one place left, and that place goes to either Chris or Matt. Chris's main dish I have a few issues with. Although I thought it looked really nice on the plate, I found the lamb pretty uninspiring and slightly overcooked. It was a balanced dish, but not fault-free. I think it didn't wow. I think that dessert was the pick of the desserts today. The critics thought uh, he could have tried harder. It was a very good dessert. But again, I feel it lacked a wow factor. I like to think I've done enough to impress, but just hope him and pray. Matt, I wondered whether he could bring finesse to his big French flavours, and most certainly, yes, he can. 
His five spice crusted pigeon could have done with a couple of minutes more cooking. It was pretty rare, even for me. Cauliflower puree I really loved. Really delicious, sweet, creamy texture. His dessert was an incredible amount of work. He had crushed nuts, chocolate fondant. Pistachio ice cream I thought was spot on, not too sweet. It was a good dessert, beautifully presented, but it's a few steps away from perfection. If I went through today, it would just be the best, best feeling in the world. So. How do we split these guys? They're both very good chefs. They've both given us good plates of food and they've both messed up a little. A little. At times like this, you just have to go with your gut. On today's food, I think I know who has to go through. Two of you are going to become semi-finalists, two of you leaving the competition. Our first semi-finalist is... Kim. First chef leaving us is... Sean. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. To come as far as I have done is a great honour in itself. I'm just disappointed in how I executed today's menu when I know I could have done a lot better. But if you mess up, then you, you do deserve to go. It's now between Matt and Chris. I can quite honestly say that this has been the toughest and hardest decision to make. The chef leaving us is... Chris. Sorry, Chris. I'm absolutely heartbroken. I'm so close, but Coke one of the best chefs in the country. It's been a great honour and a privilege. And I've had a wonderful time here. Thank you. Thank you. You guys rock. Well done. <laughs> I am absolutely overjoyed. This is amazing. This is fantastic. Semi-finals, much closer now to the finals. I'm excited. So overjoyed. I'm almost a bit teary. I'm just uh, so happy. Can't, yeah, can't believe it. Cheers. Cheers. Well done. Next time, ten more chefs are back to try and impress Monica and Greg. This is your first test on professional MasterChef. If I can keep a clear head, I should be okay. Being older, it's time to step up to the plate. I'm young, enthusiastic, and willing to learn. Lovely. You obviously are a pro. It's a complete failure. Quite annoyed to see it in front of me, to be honest. 